my interests are in developing new types of enabling technologies to treat uh, brain tumors. And we do that by making new kinds of biomaterials that can safely and effectively deliver new types of biological agents, such as nucleic acids, to tumors without hurting normal cells in the brain. Yeah, so they're really small. Um, it, it's about the same dimension of a football is to the nanoparticle as the size of a football of the planet Earth. So really small particles that can then go into uh, brain cancer cells specifically without going into um, and being effective in uh, or causing toxicity in healthy cells. And what they're made out of is a biodegradable plastic and it degrades in water into just small molecules that then get eliminated by the body safely. But what it does before it degrades is it can deliver new types of medicines um, that are different than conventional chemotherapy that are much more specific that can be biologically targeted to the, what makes cancer cancer. And so we think that this type of approach can open up new um, avenues for treatment of, of all different types of cancers in the brain and that it has a much wider therapeutic window than conventional therapies that can hurt a lot of healthy cells as well as cancer cells. So in our studies so far, we've, we've done studies in mice and rats where they're uh, directly in injected into the brain. With some other work we have going on, we're looking at how they can be systemically administered and, and still get to the brain. But the initial work we're doing is for local therapy, and this is something that could be done um, maybe also following, if there's surgery, it could be done as a, as a fo follow-up treatment at the same time to um, inject these particles in there, or it could be a, a separate step to inject them. Well, in these rodent models, what we've seen is that we can see an extension in survival with uh, these different approaches. And so that this gives us um, hope that it's, it's working. Um, but what we've developed with these technology of the particles is we can change the uh, cargos. And, and so a lot of these are based on nucleic acids or gene therapy. And the Id idea here is that we're able to introduce new genes that may have been mutated in the cancer so we can reintroduce those that could cause those cancer cells to apoptose or new genes that would cause those uh, cancer cells to be little factories that make um, sort of a chemotherapy right there to then destroy itself and the neighboring cancer cells, or to deliver nucleic acid signals that then direct um, resistant cancer cells to not be resistant anymore to conventional therapies or radiation. And so those are some of the different approaches. Um, and so the animal models and the models we look in vitro with cells from patients um, both look very promising and so we're excited to go to uh, further steps. Yeah, so there's, there's good opportunities for, uh, there. So what we find, for example, is that certain cancer cells have uh, mutations that make them resistant to these uh, standard therapies. And so we can introduce new genetic information to program those cells now to be very susceptible to those conventional treatments like radiation and uh, chemotherapy. One of the things we're also looking at is that it, it seems that inside um, with, with tumors, they're, they're heterogeneous, and there's some cells that look more like stem cells. These putative brain cancer stem cells are often resistant to then these conventional treatments. But what we can do with our nanoparticles is we can then uh, drive them to be more like the other cells um, that are very susceptible. And then when the conventional treatment comes, they can get wiped out too, rather than being this resistant fraction of cells that then persists and, and keeps growing. Yes, so, so there's a few sides to that. So one is in terms of the polymers we're using to the delivery, so we have to make sure those are, are, are very safe. And they're similar to uh, the types of materials that are used for, for example, biodegradable stitches, uh, sutures, or, or other things in the body that have been shown as, as very safe and they degrade in, in water and in, um, in the body. And then the other side is the, is the genetic material that we're delivering. And so it might be that um, certain RNA molecules might be preferable than DNA molecules, but in any case, what we're delivering is something that uh, maintains itself separately from the chromosome. It doesn't integrate into the chromosome. It isn't something that does a permanent change. It's something that's just there transiently, and then its effect is gone in, in, in a week or, or two. And so it's not something that's permanently changing the genetic information. But while it's there for that week, what it's doing is it's expressing factors that's getting that cancer cell to die. And that it's doing it in a way where if it was delivered to off-target cells, it wouldn't have an effect in those cells. It would be very benign. Um, 
and then again it would um, de degrade or be silenced over time. And so it's a way that we think we can have more precision and we can also even do things in a more personalized way if we knew um, uh, by having a sample of the biopsy, for example, we can see what the genetic mutations are um, with that patient and then design a genetic therapy that would work accordingly. Um, but this is all still very early preclinical work and, and one of the big challenges is to then have the um, uh, sort of the, the, f the funds to, to test these questions out and to ensure you know safety first. But that's why we're using a non-viral, biodegradable, safe material approach rather than a, a virus approach, which is the other way uh, a lot of um, work is going on in gene therapy. So instead of starting with a virus, it has uh, perhaps more safety concerns. We're starting with the material that we know is safe and then um, working to design it to be more effective. So we've seen different signals of efficacy in these, in these different animal models, but what's needed, for example, in the States would then be to do uh, toxicology studies with GLP material in uh, multiple, at least two animal species. So this is something that would take um, further funding or an investment to, to do that study. Once that tox study is done and very thoroughly we know it's, it's very safe, then that, that's when it could be done in an initial clinical study. So I, I'd say it's still a few years away, but it's something that we do have promising early results, and this is the type of therapy that's orthogonal to the current therapies, and so it's something that can be used in combination, um, and they, um, you know, can be readily administered, and, and so we're excited about it. Well, I, I think one of the things that's great about this workshop and then in, in this field in general is how different um, scientists with different backgrounds, for example, my background is more in biomedical engineering, are able to work together uh, with, with uh, neurosurgeons and oncologists to discuss uh, strategies and come up with new uh, solutions. And, and so I, I think that's really exciting and having um, this kind of uh, bringing together of different people with different backgrounds, I think is really important to in innovate the solutions that are needed.